Welcome guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. So you want to become a solutions architect working for AWS. Now unfortunately, when it comes to AWS SA interviews, there are some wrong information out there. In today's video, I'm going to go over them with the actual facts. How do I know all about that? Well, I have been an AWS SA for over nine years, and out of those nine years, Last six years, I've been working at AWS as a solutions architect. I have delivered multiple world-scale projects, which went on to become official AWS reference. I have taken hundreds of cloud interviews at AWS, and I have mentored many to get into top companies. So all these misinformations or wrong things that's out there, I hear them a lot. So finally, I decided to make a video so that you don't need to waste time or start worrying about these things. All right, let's get started. First thing that I hear a lot. Do you need to know coding to become a solutions architect at AWS? The answer is no. And this is why as a solutions architect at AWS, we are not even allowed to code at customers project. If the customer needs AWS folks to come and, and help them to actually do hands-on keyboard coding, they need to pay money and the group that does it is professional services. When you are going for a job in AWS, the job description will clearly say if it is for the professional services. However, most of the solutions architect positions at AWS are general SA, partner SA, and specialist SA. And for those roles, you do not need to know coding. There is no coding or data structure and algorithm round for AWS SA interviews. Fun fact, even if you mention that you know coding or you came from a coding background, that does not impact the questions that I am going to ask as an interviewer. We will not give you a coding challenge or ask you a programming question. The next misinformation that I hear a lot is, you need to have a computer science degree to get into AWS as I said, which is of course not true. Not only you don't need a computer science degree, you don't even sometimes need a engineering degree. I myself do not have a computer science degree. My mentor at AWS, Simon Rice, who I really, really respect, did not have even an engineering degree. And not only that, you may think, all right, maybe Simon just got in. He actually became AWS SA of the year, which is very difficult to get. And if you just go in the LinkedIn and look up a bunch of AWS solutions architects and look at their education, you will see yourself that a lot of them do not have computer science degree. And if you have some experience in IT, we really don't care about the degree you have. The interview outcome is determined solely by the interview answers you are giving. Which brings me to the next misconception. Interviewer will ask me a fixed number of questions, which is of course not true. Even though we have a foundational list of questions, most of the times we will dive deep based on your answers and your resume. So if you say that you have done some fancy projects involving service XYZ, we will simply dive deep on those and expect you to explain yourself. So as you could see, even though I go in the interview with some questions to ask to test your solutions architecture knowledge, the interview changes. It's not that I will always ask same number of questions to every candidate. So you must take ownership of what you are saying. If you just lie and say a bunch of stuff that you have done, expect follow-ups on those. And then if you cannot answer those, you will be failed in the interview. Another funny thing is, most of the candidates actually fail at the foundational concepts. No AWS interviewer is going to start the interview by asking you a complex corner case. We believe in peeling the layer and understanding how much you know. So funny thing, 
most of the candidate are not able to answer the foundational scaling, compute, storage, security, networking questions. But let's say you are able to answer some scaling questions correctly. And then I will dive deeper in it to see how much you know about that, which takes us to the next misconception. If I answer one or two questions wrong, I am rejected. That is never the case. Like I said before, sometimes AWS interviewer want to see how deep you can go. And if you have answered most of those foundational questions correctly, even if you give wrong answers to few questions, it is totally fine. The funny thing is the challenge is in candidates mind, they think they are giving the right answers. But then the problem is a lot of the times the answer they are giving thinking it is right is not right. Because there is so much information out there, you really need to be careful learning the foundational concept. I'll give one example. So let's say I ask a candidate, hey, can you tell me how does Kubernetes workload scale? The candidate will talk about regular EC2 scaling. And in their mind, they think that that's the correct answer. But in reality, that's not correct. Because Kubernetes EC2s scales differently than vanilla EC2s. So look up some of my interview videos where I go over the wrong answer and the right answer. So this is obviously a difficult challenge because you may think, well, Raj, this material told me this. How would I know that is wrong? It is a little bit of a hard problem. And only thing I could say is when there are so much material out there these days, when you are studying something, maybe ensure that the author of the material is a credible source. Also, rarely anyone gives all the answers correctly. Remember, as an interviewer, I actually hope that you pass the interview. Because after all, I am taking one hour out of my busy schedule to interview you. So it's in my interest. If you do good and you pass, that means I don't have to come back and do more interviews for the same position. And the last tip is related to a question that you will always get asked in the interview. Tell me about yourself. It should be two to three minutes crisp answer highlighting top projects, referring to how it can help in the current role. You do not need to elaborate on all your past work experiences. Treat it like an action-packed movie trailer and not the entire movie. You want to keep interviewer engaged and intrigued. If your answer is five minutes or longer, make it succinct and practice before going to the interview.